Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to today's uh, workshop. Hoping that that just started up properly. Uh, my name is uh, Tyler. I'm uh, going to be running the, uh, the workshop here today with uh, Dustin, one of our instructors here at CircuitStream. So first off, uh, everybody welcome. And oh, I can see some people chatting on the side. I can see and hear you. Perfect. I was just going to ask if we could do a quick sound uh, and um, visual check to make sure that everybody can see me and hear me okay. Uh, I can see all the hellos on the sides, so that is perfect. Hi, Nancy. Been looking forward to this. So we have two. So uh, a couple of quick housekeeping things before we get going here. Um, normally, I just like to make everybody aware of the um, interface here. So we've got the chat uh, section off to the side. Uh, please don't hesitate to participate in the chat at any point throughout the presentation. Uh, there's also a questions tab and a polls tab. Uh, so the questions tab, you can put questions in at uh, any point. I'm going to be running the presentation here, but uh, we do have other people on the back end at CircuitStream who will be answering questions. Um, so you know, they'll, they'll be able to kind of do that. Now, if there's any questions there that we think uh, everyone would benefit from seeing, we may hold them and try and answer them as a group at the end. Um, and uh, also, if there's just any there that we didn't get a chance to get to, then of course, we'll go through those if we have the time. Um, and then uh, today's session is going to be fully recorded. I like to mention that uh, several times. So uh, if anybody is looking to take notes or if you're looking for information, you are certainly welcome to, but uh, the whole presentation will be recorded and emailed out. So you will get a copy of the entire presentation either way. And then the uh, polls tab on the right hand side uh, that one I don't have anything in there quite yet uh, but I will publish a poll a little bit later on um, as we're getting closer to the uh, the end of the presentation so once you see that up feel free to participate uh, with that as well so um, without further ado I got actually you know what I, I usually like to check uh, where's everybody joining us from uh, feel free to uh, put it into the chat on the right hand side there and let us know where you are coming in from uh, Vancouver New York Ohio London Texas, yeah, all over the place. San Francisco, Canmore. I was just in Canmore the other day. Uh, Toronto, Memphis. Awesome. This is great. And we've got uh, about 130 uh, people or so in here right now. So everybody welcome. Uh, so without further ado, I am going to uh, share my screen here. I'm going to attempt to. Um, uh, with full disclosure, uh, for some reason, my system has issues one out of five times. And when I share the screen, it uh, likes to boot me out. So we're all going to cross our fingers and hope that that does not happen today. Uh, it hasn't been doing it lately, so I think we'll be okay. Um, but here we go. So we can share this up here. And I can get us started off with the presentation. Perfect. So... Uh, today, um, I guess I can start off here with a little bit uh, of an introduction for myself. Uh, so my name is uh, Tyler Trapp. Uh, I'm uh, education partnership here at CircuitStream. Uh, I've been here for uh, just about a year, but I come uh, from a background of hospitality and uh, tourism. Um, and a little bit uh, about myself, I'm a bit of an artist, uh, just you know, self-taught. I like to uh, draw and paint. And uh, more recently, I have switched into playing a little bit uh, with the iPad and uh, doing some digital art, which is a lot of fun. And then uh, our instructor here today, Dustin, uh, he is going to be taking over the technical session. Uh, so he's going to go through uh, everything in detail, uh, but I'm sure he can share more information about himself as well. But uh, most notably, uh, he has over eight years of experience in C Sharp and with Unity. Uh, so he's uh, excellent and we'll be able to walk everybody through the presentation here today. Uh, and then speaking of the presentation, uh, what do we expect to go through? Uh, so we're in the introduction portion right now. Uh, we'll be here for about 10, 15 minutes total. So just a few more minutes left. Uh, as soon as this wraps up, I'm going to invite Dustin onto the stage. Uh, he will take over and he will go through the technical portion. Uh, that is the majority of this presentation. It'll last for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And then uh, once that's completed, uh, he will let me know. I'll pop, back, I'll pop back up on stage. Uh, we'll go through some resources and information, especially for anybody who is looking at uh, our courses or you know has any questions for us. And then uh, we can go into the, the Q&A there at the end. So that's uh, what we can expect here today. Um, to start really quickly, uh, who are CircuitStream? So we're an educational company. We were founded back in 2015. Um, our founders noticed a gap in personalized training and education in the XR industry. Uh, XR industry is just a fancy umbrella term for extended reality, which uh, covers both augmented and virtual reality. And uh, to date, we have supported over 45,000 individual learners in uh, both XR and in Unity. Uh, these learners have taken part uh, in our workshops and our courses. And uh, obviously, you know, 45,000 is, uh, is a huge milestone for us. 
Uh, I am aware it says 40,000 on the screen. We just upped that number uh, recently. So uh, trust me, it's 45 now. <laughs> Uh, and then in terms of our team, uh, we are located at all, all around the world. Um, we are founded out of Calgary, Alberta here. That's actually where I am located. Uh, Lou and Mike, the uh, company founders are also located here. Um, but you can see on the map, we, uh, we do have people coming in from all over the place, which is great, uh, especially since we have students from all different time zones and locations as well. Um, so we are a uh, unified, um, uh, sorry, a Unity certified training partner. Um, and so what that means is we do have to meet certain uh, criteria as a company uh, and through our courses in order to qualify for this. Um, so training partners are approved based on their expertise, uh, their focus on quality education, um, and uh, their commitment to providing the highest level of training available. So uh, obviously we, uh, we meet those uh, standard or those criteria, and that's why we are certified training partners with Unity. And then, uh, you know, above all, CircuitStream is an educational company, but you can see we've had the pleasure of working with uh, some of the world's largest and most exciting companies. Um, you know, we could probably fill several sheets of uh, logos if we really wanted to. Uh, the idea here was just kind of to share uh, the range of uh, companies that we're working with, uh, and especially for people who are under the impression that uh, augmented virtual reality is uh, specifically within the gaming world. Um, you know, in fact, a huge uh, a portion of our students are going through for app development for industry use uh, in all of these different companies. And, and like I said, uh, many, many, many more. So we've uh, 45,000 uh, learners is quite a few people. And then uh, speaking of Unity, so what is Unity? Um, if you've seen this screen before, uh, chances are you've probably been in Unity. And I guess uh, specifically, if you've seen this uh, muffin clicker uh, screen in front of us here, uh, chances are you went through our C Sharp coding uh, course, because that is one of the uh, things that we teach there. That's uh, uh, one of the uh, tasks that we go through. Um, but for everybody else, uh, Unity is a free 3D development engine for building games, simulations, and experiences. And it's uh, the easiest way to begin doing so. Uh, Unity's impact. Uh, Unity is currently used uh, to create over 60% of the world's AR and VR content and is also responsible for a massive share of the broader content application markets. Uh, in terms of a global impact, uh, Unity is, uh, sorry, apps developed through Unity are downloaded about 3 billion times monthly. And the software is borderless. It's uh, currently being used in over 190 com uh, countries globally and, uh, and just growing with that. And then uh, how does this work? Uh, so obviously there's a lot more detail that goes into it uh, once you go through the course, uh, but just to kind of summarize what the process would look like, you know, everything starts with an idea. Um, from there, you would build your assets and bring them into, the, into Unity and create immersive interactions using scripting and uh, C-sharp coding. Um, once you're happy with your build, uh, then what you would do is uh, leverage an SDK, which would be a software development kit um, to ensure that your uh, target device is compatible with your build. And then once you've done that, you can render, publish uh, your app, and then you've uh, completed the process. So, you know, again, that's that's kind of a quick summary of it. But uh, overall, for somebody who was new to this, that's kind of what it would look like um, topically. And then uh, in terms of our academic offerings, we have several different courses that we offer here at CircuitStream. Um, on the screen here, you can see we have the 10-week uh, XR development with Unity course. We have the 10-week uh, interaction design and prototyping course. And we also have our six-month Unity developer bootcamp. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit uh, of those uh, more in detail, uh, likely after the presentation that uh, Dustin does there. But uh, just to give you kind of a topical overview, those are the three main courses that uh, we have offered here at the company. And then uh, what are we going to learn today? So today's uh, course is, or um, workshop, I should say, is focused on uh, how to start a project in Unity, uh, relearning the, uh, the basics of VR hand tracking, uh, basic scripting in Unity using Visual Studio, and how to uh, build VR scenes and interactions in Unity. So uh, that is it for my introduction portion here. Um, I am going to stop sharing this screen now and bring myself back up here. And uh, we can uh, invite Dustin up onto the stage and uh, Dustin can get started here. Uh, Dustin, if you can hear me, you are welcome to pop up. Uh, let me just see uh, if I can hear, say something. Hello, hello, hello. Perfect, awesome. Awesome. All, All right. right, well, Dustin, um, you can hop in here and uh, just uh, give me a holler when you're ready for me to pop back in. I'll, I'll be uh, waiting here. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Hello, <laughs> everybody. Right. Uh, let me see if I can get my screen share in here. Um, share screen one. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty, 
pretty big project here. Uh, we don't have time to do any uh, scripting today, uh, given the time constraint of an hour. So what I've done is I've actually gone and done all of the scripts already. And I've sent Unity packages out with the uh, project. People can download those. And um, we're just going to import them into Unity and use them. Uh, so I have one package for scripts. And I'll go ahead and bring that into Unity. So. I just started a Unity project, um, URP, doesn't really matter if it's HDRP or URP, whatever works for you. And I imported uh, some asset, some paid asset. I couldn't include this in the uh, repository because, well, I don't know if anybody owns it, but uh, you can use pretty much whatever you want. This is just going to be my environment that I'm going to use for the uh, demo today. So here, I let that load up. Here we go. Here's my... Here's my environment that we're going to be having teaching school in. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do it right here. Right here. It'll be a nice view. All right. So I have my assets right here. I'm going to import them. So starting with the scripts, uh, bring the scripts in, import everything. I have a table here that I'll be using. I'll import that as well. Perfect. And some hands. This is the uh, default hands asset that we teach or use in our uh, VR XR dev course. Okay. So all of those are imported. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is actually get this project VR ready. Now, um, I'm going to try to accommodate all of the headsets out there. So uh, bear with me. I'm using an index myself. but uh, So I'm going to start by going to the package manager. And I'm going to go to the Unity registry here. And let me just get my highlight tool out. There we go. That's better. And I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom. And I'm going to import or install the XR plugin management uh, package here. All right, how are we doing on questions? Um, okay. All right, so with the XR plugin management tool downloaded, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the XR interaction toolkit. This is going to be a way for us to have things like grabbing objects and interacting with stuff in uh, VR without having to do a lot of custom code. So I'm going to install this as well. Now, the XR Interaction Toolkit's based off of OpenXR, I believe. So it's going to give me a pop-up window here asking if I want to uh, enable the new input bindings. And we have to click Yes to that in order for us to use it. So this is actually going to uh, close Unity and enable the new input bindings and then reopen it. So unfortunately, we have some breathing room. So <laughs> go ahead and uh, catch up if you're following along. Now, if you did install or download the uh, package from Git, um, the only thing, so right here is my the whiteboard uh, Git project that I had. And I just have this custom packages folder here. And this is where I put the scripts, the table, and the VR hands, if you want to use those uh, to make your own project. But this project's like basically already complete, so you don't have to um, worry about hooking up stuff if you're just going to use this. 
Okay, so my project's open again. I have XRI installed. I have the package uh, plugin, XR plugin manager installed. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get us to uh, install the samples from the XR interaction toolkit, the starter assets. We need those to speed up the process a bit. And there we go. That's it. Okay. All right. So with that done, let me just uh, make sure I have everything. We're now going to have to enable VR for the frameworks that we want. So I'm going to go to the project settings uh, under edit project settings. And in here, we have the XR plugin management, the package we installed. Now, if you don't have, if you're using an Oculus Quest, you have to have Android support, and you would uh, go to Android tab and click Oculus. Now, I'm not using an Oculus, so I'm not going to be doing this. Um, if you're using a Vive or an Index, then you'll click on Window and you'll enable Open XR. This is going to install another package for us. Lots of installing. All right. Now, when you install OpenXR or click OpenXR here, it gives you this little exclamation mark. Now, these are things you can fix, issues you might have with your project. Now, most of them you can just click fix, 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 or fix all. But this one right here, the uh, interaction profile, well, that really depends on your controllers or your headset. Um, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go to the OpenXR here, and I'm going to hit the plus button, and here you can control or select a controller that you're going to use with your headset. Now, I'm using, again, an index, so I'm going to click the Valve Index controller. Uh, if you're using a Vive, you'd probably click the Vive controller. And there we go. There are no more warnings, and we should be set up to go. So just to uh, make sure everything's working fine, I'm going to... Actually, I'll set up my scene first, and then I'll make sure everything's working fine. So I'm just going to delete this character here. I don't need that. Uh, okay, so um, the, the packages do need to be installed for every new project, unfortunately. Every time you start a new project in Unity, you have to install all the packages again and again and again. You have to reset your settings and do all that stuff. I know, pain in the butt. So, okay, we're going to set up our scene a little bit now. So I'm going to actually right-click in my hierarchy here, and I'm going to add a XR, XR origin action-based. So we're using the action input system. That's the new input system. So we're going to use all the action-based XR stuff. Now, this XR origin is basically going to be our headset. So how I like to explain it is I'm going to just pull this up here. So, OK, so add a, I'm just going to explain this. So uh, don't worry about this part here. So imagine that this box here, this square, this is our play area. So this is my my room where I, you know, dragged the controller around and decided my play area for my VR area. So when I walk around uh, my room, in my camera offset, I have the main camera, left-hand controller, and a right-hand controller. Well, the main camera is basically my head. It's going to be tracking my head. So as I walk around my room, so will the main camera be moving around this box. Now, when we're using locomotion, uh, we don't move this main camera. Like when I press forward on my joystick and I want to walk forward, uh, I actually move the whole origin around. So that's how this XR origin kind of works. And the left and the right hand, of course, are tracked locally to the parent. So as I walk around, all these are just going to walk around and be tracked wherever my hands and head go. Delete my plane there. Actually, let me make sure this is uh, centered with the ground. Kind 
I put it down there. Okay, so this is where my center is going to start. All right, and uh, let me see. I'm not sh too sure if how to handle the questions here while I'm presenting. Um, <laughs> appreciate the uh, help. All right, so next, what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that we enable post-processing on our main camera. Now, um, just because I'm using a default pre-built scene, I have to make sure that my post-processing effects are on a layer. I'll just use the default layer. And I'll tell my camera to use post-processing. So I'm going to check that. So I'll have a nice bloom effects and a whole bunch of stuff. All right. Now, uh, because we installed the, the XRI samples in our project window here, and we have the presets. So with the left-hand controller and right-hand controller, we can use uh, these pre-built, I don't know what they're doing over here. But anyways, we can <laughs> we can use these pre-built uh, settings to basically set it up really quick. Now, to make sure that I'm not messing anything up here. Okay, that's right. Cool. XR origin's a little low, but uh, there we go. So this is the preset button right here in the top right. On this preset button, uh, we can click on it and we'll see the left controller and right controller. Well, this is the left-hand controller, so I'll just select left-hand. And this is the right-hand controller, so I'll select right-hand. There we go. Now they're both tracking the left and right-hand respectively. And we, they also give us access to uh, some input. So UI presses, uh, select actions, which is grabbing, activate, which is the trigger on the back of your... Uh, your weapon here, and uh, the haptics and a whole bunch of other things. Now, by default, they're using raycasts for the interactors. So this is going to allow us to use a, a ray out from our hand to interact with objects far away. I might change this layer. We'll see later. <laughs> we'll see how much time I have. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my interaction manager here. And we need to add a input action manager. Input Action Manager is basically going to allow us to specify a uh, Unity input action set to use for our XRI. So I'm going to hit the plus button here, and uh, I'm going to click on a little circle here and select the only one that shows up, XRI default input actions. There we go. Now on my XR origin, I'm going to make this uh, floor tracking. I'm not going to be using device for this. Typically, most projects are going to use floor tracking. So uh, that just means that the bottom of my XR origin is going to be the bottom or my floor in real life, pretty much. It shouldn't matter because I'm going to use some locomotion here. So quick locomotion. I'm going to add a locomotion system. I'm going to add a continuous move provider, action-based. Again, we don't want device-based because we're using the action input system and um, turn provider as well, so we can move and turn. Now with the move provider and the turn provider, again, we have those presets that we can use to um, basically hook all this up automatically. So I'm gonna click on that preset button again, I'm gonna click on continuous movement, and then same for the turn one, turn movement. Now, with the continuous move provider and continuous turn provider, uh, we have to decide which controllers are gonna be used to control our movement. So the left hand, um, typically for me, I prefer my left hand to be movement, my right hand to be turning. So that's what I'm going to do. So for the continuous move provider, I will disable the right hand. And for the turn provider, I will disable the left hand. And I will, I like a little bit more speed. So I'm going to double the turn speed and the movement speed of the uh, move and turn providers. All right, with that done, should be able to test this. So let me just, uh, one more thing I'm missing here, actually. I like having gravity. I like having a ground and some physics around me. So if you want to have a little bit of uh, an actual rigid body, except we're not going to be using rigid body, uh, go ahead and add a character controller. Uh, the character controller on its own does nothing. We have to have a controller to control the character controller. <laughs> I know that sounds really silly, but you, Unity uh, XRI has one built in. So if you search for character controller driver, 
that is what we want to use. Now the driver, um, you don't have to hook any of that up. I'm going to reduce the radius. So if I enable gizmos here, we can see my my rig and my this collider represents my body. It's a collider for my body. So we need that collider to be a little bit higher. I'll just say point a one. I'm going to lower the radius just so I'm not just so I have some room to bump into things. Um, point two, sure. And yeah, we can, it'll automatically adjust the height of this collider uh, using the height of our headset in real life. So if my headset's laying on the ground, this collider will be way down here. But as I stand up or as I crouch and, and stand up and crouch, the collider will actually resize itself to match our body. Uh... Okay, no issues yet. Good, good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, I should be able to test this now. So let's um, go ahead and hit play and make sure that this is working. Give it a second to load. And here we are. So I have my interactors here, my little rays. I can look around, I can turn, I can move around my scene. Really big scene, nice environment. All right, so far so good. So now we're able to move around in VR, that's that. Okay, so next I'm going to set up the actual scene itself. So we're gonna make a little bit of a classroom. So. Uh, we're going to need a table and a probably a whiteboard that we can draw on. So I'm going to just use uh, pre prefabs, Unity, like primitive objects for the whiteboard. Uh, for the table, I have that Im one I imported. Uh, it's a, just a free table I found online. I'm going to remove all these extra assets that came with this project because I, I don't really want them or need them. So example assets, presets. I do want samples. Um, do not need scenes, and I delete tutorial info. There we go. Delete all that. Okay. All right. How are we doing here? Um, okay. So uh, in my import section here, I have a table. I'm just going to drag the prefab in here so I have a little table I can put things on so I'm not bending over or anything like that. I'm just going to shrink it down, and there we go. OK, so I'm going to create a simple cube here. And uh, this cube is going to just be my whiteboard, I guess. I'm going to move this cube their position here. Make it larger. There we go. Just a simple whiteboard. Nothing fancy. Uh, with the whiteboard, I'm going to make sure its forward access is facing uh, forward, which I don't believe it is. No, it's not. That's my fault. I was in the wrong. I was in the wrong mode there. <laughs> so I'm gonna just uh, flip this around. So facing forward. There we go. Okay, cool. Now, uh, I'm going to create a quad onto this whiteboard. So this whiteboard is going to act as a collider. So our hand is going to, when we have hold a marker, we're going to collide with this collider. Our hand is going to hit it and kind of allow us to draw on it. Um, so that's the first part. And the second part is actually having a second mesh, which is going to represent the uh, texture. So we're going to have a texture that's actually that we're actually drawing. 
Now I'm going to just right click, create a 3D quad. There we go. Very simple quad. Now I want to make sure that this quad is exactly on the outside here. I don't want to be inside the, the whiteboard. So I'm pr pretty sure it's uh, 0 0.5. I'll just do 5, 1. There we go. I'll remove the mesh collider though. OK, so let's make some materials. I have a materials folder here. Um, don't really care about the skybox and delete that. I'm going to create the material that is white. Might use that later. We'll see. Uh, another material. Oh, that's a script. <laughs> I'm going to create a material that is the whiteboard. Create a material for the uh, whiteboard texture. And uh, maybe I'll create a black material. I might use this as well later. OK, so the whiteboard itself, I'm going to give the whiteboard material here. Oh, I'm just going to drag and drop that in the materials section there. And uh, I'll change the material to be a unlit URP, since I'm in the Universal Under Pipeline unlit and I'll do transparent we'll do a transparent whiteboard because I think they look cool uh, so I'm going to change the color of this to be fairly transparent maybe I'll do like a light blue here and something like that I might change it later we'll see now with the quad this is actually going to represent our texture so I'll just name that texture and I'm going to give it the whiteboard texture material. Uh, again, I'm going to have this as unlit. URP unlit, um, transparent as well. And I'm going to just leave it as is. OK. So we have our whiteboard. We have our little board in the back here. We have a table that we can grab pens from, I guess. And uh, awesome. So now with the scripts that you downloaded here in the scripts folder. Uh, I have some stuff for the whiteboard. Now, there's two scripts we have to worry about here, the marker interactable and the whiteboard uh, script. So for the whiteboard, we're going to have to attach this whiteboard script onto the whiteboard. So I'm going to drag that onto the whiteboard here. Now, it asks for a target material. That's just referencing the actual texture that is going to be using to draw on. So I'm going to give it the... Uh, Whiteboard texture material. There we go. We could set a texture height resolution if we wanted. I just have 1280 by default. And I'm going to keep the texture format the same. All right. So with that said, we need a marker. So I'm going to, before I do the marker, I'm actually going to uh, put some hands inside of the XR rig. So in the left hand controller and the right hand controller, uh, I have uh, where did I put it? VR hands here, there. So I have some hand prefabs. I'm just going to drag those in and drop them on the left and right hand controller. And they're going to be right here. Now, one issue we're having here is that they're both facing the same direction. Our hands do not look like this. <laughs> so we're going to have to flip one of them so they're, they're like this. Now, uh, luckily, to do this, it's fairly simple. We're just going to take our left hand, and we're going to make it scale negative 1. There we go. We have a left hand and a right hand. Now, I'm not going to be doing animations with the hands the typical way with XRI's uh, animate model here. I'm going to be using a script I made uh, just to, I don't know, be lazy. But I already did up the hand controller, and I made a custom pose for uh, pinching, I guess. It's not great. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not an animator. Uh, bear with me. But um, so what I'm going to do is on my hands, I'm going to go to find my animator, and I'm going to add my script, the hand animation controller. To both of them, actually. So 
on these hand animation controllers, we're gonna, uh, it's basically just like hooking up XRIs. We're gonna say, say use reference, and we're going to select what input event is going to cause this animation to happen. Uh, so for the pinch, I'm gonna make it the grab event, which uh, is called select with uh, you, the XRI kit. So I'm gonna click on a little circle there, and I'm gonna click, uh, this is the left hand. So left hand interaction select. <laughs> Same with the right hand, use reference, right hand, interaction, select. There we go, that should allow those hands to animate. Now let's just make sure that this is actually working in VR before we continue. I like to do this in steps, so here we go. All right, oh, pulling my hair. Okay, so here's my hands. Awesome. I grip and I can see I'm doing a little pinch in interaction here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So far, so good. All right. Um, just checking on. Okay. All right. So. We've got some hands, we can do some animations. Now we've got to grab things. So we have ray interactors on there right now, which is fine, but we need to come up with a actual um, pen that we can hold in our hand. Now, by default, if I was just to create a pen and uh, grab it, the center of my hand transform or the interactor transform is going to be linked to the center of the pen transform. So the pen will just kind of right into my hand and it's not gonna look good. So I'm going to try to make this look a little good as well, uh, starting with making a pen. So to do this, I'm actually going to, I want to have the right animation. I want to, I want to see how it looks while I'm playing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play and uh, I'm going to do this with my right hand, I guess. So with my right hand, I'm going to just hold it here and I'm going to do a grip. So I have this animation and then I'm going to hit pause in uh, Unity. Okay, when I hit pause, everything kind of freezes. So we can see here, my hand is doing uh, this grip animation. Now I can uh, go ahead and build my pen. So on my left, no, that was my right hand. On my right hand, we have this attached transform. Now, again, by default, it's zero, which means it's the very center of the interactor, which is fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pen. So I'm going to start by creating a empty game object. And I'm going to call this uh, pen attach or attach transform, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to create another empty game object as a child of this. And I'm going to call this uh, pen. Uh, let's, let's call the marker. Call the markers. I might as well keep calling the markers. Marker attach, marker. Perfect. OK. I'll do the marker later. For now, I'm just going to build it. So I'm going to create some primitives. I'm not going to. I could have imported an asset. I was lazy. So I'm going to create a very simple pen here uh, using just some shapes. Even if you don't have uh, an asset, you can do something like this as well. OK, so I just got this uh, cylinder here. And I'm going to position it in my hand kind of where I want it to be. Here. Tilt it a little using T, Q, W, E, R, and T to uh, move these around and uh, position them. Down. Good enough. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, give myself a tip. So I'm going to create a, let's do a capsule. I'll shrink that down a tiny bit and move it forward. So that's going to represent the tip of my marker. And uh, let's just make another capsule. Just to elongate this a little bit. There we go. My very impressive pen. 
Unity just crashed on me, I think. Uh oh. That's not good. Oh, come on. Oh no, why do I have these issues? Okay, suddenly works. <laughs> All right, we're back. Uh, where am I here? Where did my, there you are, okay, cool. All right, where am I? There we go, I'm gonna go back to gripping you. Okay. <laughs> Time to go to Unreal. Yeah, they have a lot nicer uh, grips, that's for sure. Having to do all this nonsense right here is a pain in the butt. But anyway, I think that's fine. My pen isn't, you know, amazing, but it gets the job done. So uh, with my pen, I need to define a center for this. So I'm going to use the center of this sphere as the center of the pen. So I'm going to uh, take that and create an empty game object. I'll call this a uh, marker. I could call him a pen. I'll call it marker. And then I will drag everything as a child of the marker. So this capsule here, that's going to be the tip. So this is going to be like the, um, the color tip, I guess. And now with uh, my system, I'm using Raycast to detect when the pen is touching the actual marker board. You could use physics as well. Um, I found Raycast was a little bit smoother for me, um, but you could use physics. So. With a raycast, you have to define a tip of the pen. So I'm going to create another empty child here. I'm going to call this uh, pen tip. And we want to make sure that it's on the very tip of this, which I think is exactly negative one. Yep. And we want to make sure that it's facing forward. So the blue axis is forward, which means I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. So the blue axis faces forward, just like that. All right, this is pretty much how I want my marker to look, uh, give or take. Maybe I'll move it a teeny bit. Good enough. All right. OK. So now that I've built this marker, I don't want to uh, click the, un the play button, because that'll actually destroy everything that I've just done. So if I want to save this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it into my project window to turn it into a prefab. Now, the whole reason I made this marker attach is because this marker attaches position and rotation and scale is all zeros and ones. It's all zeroed out, reset, which is good because this is going to represent where the pen uh, is attached to my hand right here. So the, the offset from here to my pen is uh, basically going to be the touch point. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marker Move it as a ch put it as a child of the attach of the hand, and then I'm going to take the marker attach and set that as a child of the marker. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me undo that. One thing I forgot to do, which is very important, um, the parent, the marker here, or set its scale to one. We want the parent scale to always be one. So now I'll drag that all back on. Drag the marker off, set the marker attach as a child of the marker, and there we go. That's my marker. So the marker has the tip, uh, two cylinders to represent the body. It has this attach point, which is a uh, local position and rotation from the center of the marker to the attach of the hand. Now, uh, with this, I'm going to take this marker, I'm going to drag it into my project window just to turn it into a prefab. There we go. And uh, that should be good. So I'm going to exit play mode. And on my table here, I will drag my marker onto the table. Here we are. A little offset, but that's fine. You can rotate this as much as you want. doesn't really matter. OK. Now, the marker itself needs to have a couple scripts. So I have a script called marker interactable. And I'm going to drag this and put it onto the root of my marker here. 
it'll automatically add an XR grab interactable and a rigid body. So these are the, uh, the XR grab interactable is the default grabbing interactable for XRI. It's built by XRI. And uh, it allows us to, it, it basically signifies an object that we can grab, pick up, and optionally throw. It allows us to optionally track position, track rotation, throw. Uh, we can control how hard you can throw it. Um, you can also change the movement type, which I'll talk a bit about later. Now, with the uh, marker uh, interactable script I have here, this uh, script basically allows us to define, define the marker. So the script has to have a tip render and a tip transform. The tip render is going to refer to the color of the marker. So you could use the back here or the tip. I, I personally just prefer the tip. Um, the script could be changed to change the color of both of these if wanted, but I'm going to drag the color tip into the uh, marker section here. So here's the color tip, here's the marker. I'm going to drag that in there. And now the tip transform refers to the very tip of it, so the pen tip, I'm going to drag that in there as well. Thickness, um, I'll do two thickness. We could change that later, depending on the size of the marker itself. And here's the color. So uh, for this, I'm just going to make it white, like pure white, with a opacity of one, so it's fully opaque. Not that it matters. Um, going to it auto saved this prefab, so I can close the prefab now, and um, I could duplicate this. I have two markers. There we go. And uh, let's say the second marker, I will give it a color of uh, completely black with a completely zero alpha, which means fully transparent. Um, and we can also change the thickness so we can make it bigger. So this could be uh, four thickness instead of two, which means it would uh, it would erase more. So this will be my eraser, and this will be my actual color. And you can define as any sort of colors you want in here, you know, green, blue, pink, red, whatever, uh, of different, different opacities or whatnot. OK, so I got two markers. Let me just uh, fix those up in terms of position here. OK. Now, we're going to run into some issues, and we're going to have to solve those issues. So let me just hit play here, and let's uh, see how this works. All right. I'm trying not to punch my mic. <laughs> so with my Ray Interactors, if I just uh, grab this, you can see it's not exactly in the right spot. Well, the reason for that is because we never actually set the attached transform. So I can fix that as well. Um, let's see if this actually works if I push it against here. OK, not typically working. That's fine. Another thing we're going to run into is, well, if I hold this uh, marker any like close enough and I press forward on my joystick, I'm actually going backwards. Well, that's because the collider of this marker is colliding with my body. So the, the collider of the marker is like pushing my body back when I move. Really silly, but we're going to have to fix this using layers. Exit play mode. There we go. So how I like to do this is I create two layers. Uh, one layer. So uh, sorry, I'm doing this too fast here. Let me just go back here. I'm just clicking on uh, my marker, going to the layer section, the top of the game object, and I'm going to add layer. Now in here, I'm going to create a layer for the player. Uh, I'll call this player collision, and I'll create a layer for interactables. So interactables, or interactable, I guess. Interactable. Come on. There we go. OK, so on my marker, I will set the layer to interactable. There we go. So both these have the interactable layer now. And on my XR origin, I'm going to set the layer to uh, player collision. Now, player collision, I'm going to hit um, no. I only want to change the origin, not all the children, because if I make my, well, I mean, if I'm using direct interactors layer later and I try to interact with an interactable, it's not going to work. So just this object. 
Okay, so the interactables have the interactable layer and my origin has the player layer. So now what I can do is I can go to edit, project settings, and in physics, I can I have this little physics matrix, collision matrix. Now I can choose what collides, what layers collide with what layers. Now, obviously I don't want the interactable to collide with my body, which is the player layer. So I'm gonna find interactable and I'm going to find the player collision where they intersect, interactable, player collision, right there. And I'm going to uncheck that. So there is one problem fixed. Okay. Now, uh, for the object not being oriented in my hand correctly, on the marker, is one thing I forgot to do here, is uh, we need to make sure that the XR grab interactable attach transform is set. So the attach transform by default will just use the center um, of the marker, the default transform of the marker. But we can actually manually set it. So if I set it to marker attach, it will use wherever this is instead. Okay. Now I need to make sure that everything is set up correctly just before I continue on here. Oh, right. We didn't do materials. I should probably do that. So the pen needs some materials. All right. I, it's a completely boring pen. Um, I'll make the grip here, the my materials folder. There we go. Uh, I will make the grip black. So I'll set the color to black. Uh, I'll do gray for the outside, fine. And then I need a special material for the tip here. So I'll create a uh, new material. I'll call this marker tip. And sure, lit, that's fine. I'm just going to drag that on there. And I think that's right. Yes. Save. Okay. okay I'm going to save my scene in case I crash again. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what new issues we run into. Okay. I'm going to grab my little markers here. There we go. That looks nice. Uh, so can I interact? Oh. Oh, yeah, that's okay. That's fine. I know why it's doing that. Can I interact with this? Doesn't look like it. It's because that's the invisible one. <laughs> there we go. So we can see I can draw, but... Oh, jeez. Oh my gosh, my apologies. So we could see I was able to draw on the board here. But it was really hard to do because we, we don't have any physics with our hands. The issue we're running into right now is that my hand goes right through the whiteboard. So it's really hard for us to precisely determine where around that whiteboard we're going to hit the whiteboard. So I want to actually have collision. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. And I'm going to show you um, the easiest way first. But I'm going to show you one of the issues that I have with the easiest way. Now. On our marker interactables, we're able to switch the movement type. So instantaneous is the default movement type here. Uh, but if I go to velocity tracking, instead of just actually moving the position of our pen directly to where our hand is, it's going to uh, use the rigid body to push the, rigid, the, push the pen to where our hand is. So it's actually pushing, not just being set to my hands. That way, uh, because it's no longer kinematic, it's able to collide with things. So I can collide with the whiteboard, for example. But we are going to still have a bit of an issue. And I'll show you the issue here in just a second. Hopefully my my uh, phone doesn't go off. That was annoying. <laughs> okay, so I need the uh, white one. That's this one right here. Perfect. So when I move around, it's a little little slow. I could increase the speed to fix that as well. But the issue we're going to run into here is that um, when I press against the whiteboard, if I push 
Like that's that's kind of working. It's not terrible. It's, it's kind of working. It's okay. But if I push a little too hard, it kind of just bends the pen. And like as I go through, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't hold its position really well. So you have to be very very careful as you're drawing to avoid that, which is hard if you're trying to you know draw letters and numbers and whatnot. But so far, so good. We have uh, some drawing, which is nice. Um, it'd be nice if we could uh, do a bit more, though. So I have a better solution for this. Um, it's a bit more complicated. But again, uh, I have the scripts made already, so no problem. Uh, I'm going to put this back to instantaneous tracking on the marker. Actually, I'll do that editing the prefab. And when we edit the prefab, it'll change all of the uh, interactables, not just the marker. Um, there we go. OK. So how am I going to fix this? Well, on my hands, I like to use physics-based hands. <laughs> so to do this, I have a script here. Uh, Actually, you know, I'll show you a different way here. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, create two empty game objects on my camera offset, one for the left hand and one for the right hand. Left hand, right hand, perfect. These empty game objects are going to represent our hands position rotation in real life. So they're going to represent me moving my hands around in real life in the current position of where my hands are in real life. So on these uh, two game objects, I'm going to add a uh, the same thing we're using in the left hand here, the XR controller action based. So XR controller action based. There we go. I'm going to add one to the left hand and one to the right hand. And for the left hand, again, I'm just going to use the presets because it's easy. Uh, so I'm going to select preset, left hand controller right hand preset, right hand controller. Now, again, these two game objects are only going to represent the position and rotation of my hands in real life. They're not going to do anything else than just that. So I'm going to make sure enable input tracking is checked, but I'm going to disable enable input actions. There's not going to be any actions tied to these. We only want to track the position and rotation of these two objects. So I'm going to disable input actions for both the left and right hand here. This will make sense in a second. So for my controllers, what I'm going to do, uh, I don't actually like the Ray interactables. I'm going to use a direct interactor for this. So I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to just take the left and or the hands off here. I will delete these. Oh, uh, delete. There we go. On my camera offset, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a XR direct interactor. So this is a interactor that allows me to directly interact with things. I have to actually physically touch them. So this uh, direct interactor, and I'll make this the um, uh, left interactor. And then I'll have a right interactor as well. I'm going to set this up just like last time. So using the presets, going to use the left controller. And for the right one, I'm going to use the right controller. OK, so here's the thing that this is going to do. This script I have uh, called physics-based hands, it's going to take the left interactor, and it's going to, just like the um, velocity tracking for the pen, exact same thing. It's going to move my hand, um, my actual hand model, and my interactor to where my hand is in real life. So if my model, if my hand model is over here, but my hand in real life is over here, it's going to actually push it over here. That way, if I, you know, in VR, if I slap my hands against a table, my hands in VR are actually going to hit that table. So uh, I'm going to Disable enable input tracking. I do not want 
the position of my interactors to be uh, tracking directly to where my hands are in real life. I want my, my script to handle that. So I will disable input tracking for the left and right hand. Okay. Now I'm going to add my physics-based hand. So I'm going to add that script to both my interactors here. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to set the hand targets. So the left-hand interactor is going to target the left hand. And the right-hand interactor is going to target the right hand. OK. Where am I? OK, so with the uh, interactor set up, we currently have our hands. It's going to move towards other hands. Well, we should probably also have the uh, prefabs as well. So I'll put my uh, left-hand prefab on the left-hand interactor my right-hand prefab on the right-hand interactor. Now, I want to make sure their position's proper, so I'm going to set the prefab's position to zero. There we go. Perfect. Um, I also want to make sure the rotate rotation's right, so I'm just going to hit um, negative one scale on the left-hand interactor there. Perfect. OK, let's see how this works. And turn around so I don't hit my stuff. So my hands now should, oh, maybe there's no collider there. Mm, let me double check that. Oh, I forgot to put colliders on my hands. That's probably an important step. <laughs> My hands need colliders in order to collide with things. Now, they do have colliders. The interactors have colliders by default. However, they are trigger colliders. Now, typically, you're going to want to do trigger colliders and a physical collider. Um, I recommend having the physical collider a bit smaller than the trigger collider. That way, if you want something to trigger, the trigger will hit first, but the physics will be second. So you can trigger something, and then you can also collide with something. Now, I'm just going to use spheres for this because why not? Uh, so uh, let's see here. We have a sphere for the left hand. Yeah, let's do the left hand. I'll just add a 3D object sphere. I'm going to remove the uh, mesh render and filter. And I'm going to set the radius to like 0 0.05. Sure. For now, I'll do 0 0.05 on both of these. There we go. So just like the XR origin, we do not want the colliders of our hands to conflict with the interactables. When we're grabbing something, it's going to like make our hands go all over the place. So again, with the uh, sphere colliders here, I'm going to select them both. I'm going to set them as well to the player collision layer. That way, the collision of my hands is not going to conflict with the interactables, but it will still interact with objects in my scene on the default layer. OK, now with uh, my collider set up here, let's just uh, test this out. OK, here we go. OK, grab that. Nice. My hands cannot go through this table. They are in real life. Just in the game, I cannot go through the table. So that's nice. Now with the pen, if I was to uh, bring it over here, uh, it's still a little janky. So this is where a little bit of fine tuning comes in. Oh, I actually didn't want to exit play mode. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab a pen. And um, I'm just going to make the grab hand, I guess. Or you can grab a pen and then hit pause. So I love to do this when I'm uh, playing around in VR, um, doing stuff and then pausing the game so you can test in uh, the editor. 
very handy way to test things. Just like that. I don't need my headset anymore. I don't need my hands. I don't have to grip anything. Now that I'm paused, everything's locked. So I can uh, actually go in my scene and take a look at my marker here, how it looks in my hand. So for the uh, sphere collider of my right hand here, you can see the sphere collider is kind of outside the range. So it's not entirely working properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sphere collider and I'm going to make it match up with the tip of my pen, just like that. So it's nice and perfect. Now, what the uh, physics-based hands does is it moves the position of my hands to the position of my hands in real life, but it doesn't, it doesn't use physics to rotate them. The rotation happens instantly. Uh, this is nice because it gives us really good control, especially if you're using a sphere collider like this. You have really good control, and we have to make sure that the tip of this pen uh, doing a ray cast forward is going to be enough to hit the whiteboard, but the collider needs to be far enough forward that we don't go through the whiteboard. So we want, we want it to start here and kind of end here sort of thing, just to give us a little bit of a buffer room. So this is a lot nicer. I, I think this, this uh, sphere collider's position is a lot better now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, select my sphere, and I'm going to uh, just copy the transform, uh, copy component. Now when I exit play mode, I can uh, select my sphere again, and I can paste the values of that component so it's where it was when I was in play mode, a little bit forward. Uh, again, I think that was just like a little bit forward on the z-axis here. So I'm going to do the same thing for my other hand. I'm going to move it a little bit forward on the z-axis. Let's see how this looks. Now I'm trying to go a little fast here because I, I know some people may be curious on the scripts and uh, I didn't have time to do them with you today, but I, I would like to explain them if there's time, uh, what's going on. But uh, so here we are, let's see. Uh, it's a little, a little janky. So there's one issue I'm running into here. The hand isn't moving really smoothly with my hand in real life. So there's a couple ways we can fix this. Um, one thing I wanna do is just increase the length of the ray a tiny bit, a very tiny bit. So on my marker, I'm going to increase the uh, ray distance to 0 0.015. And now what I'm also going to do is on my whiteboard, on the uh, collider here behind the texture, this one right here, when we're colliding with this and we're dragging an object across this, it's using default Unity physics. Uh, we can implement our own physics to make it smoother. So I'm going to go to my materials folder and I'm going to implement a new physics material. I'll call this a uh, whiteboard. When you're drawing on a whiteboard, it's not usually, there's not much friction, right? It's usually pretty smooth, um, especially when you're drawing on a magical one that's transparent floating in the air. So <laughs> I'm going to put the friction to like, I don't know, 0.1, like really, really low. And I'll say uh, use minimum friction and no bounciness, I don't want bounciness at all. Next, I'm going to select my whiteboard, there we go. And um, on the box collider for the whiteboard, I'm going to go to the material and I'm gonna select my whiteboard material. So now it'll use that slipperiness. Okay, let's see how this, fe this feels. How am I doing on time? <laughs> I forgot to start my clock, so. Okay. Look at that. That feels way better. I can actually draw faces now, kind of. <laughs> one, oh, it's a plus. One plus one equals two. Oh, two. There we go. So that works, uh, the white and then the 
bl the black one here. This is the transparent one, and I think I increased the width on it of it as well. But uh, it's like a transparent marker, so it just erases. Now I could um, give this marker like a bigger. I could make it bigger. I could make it like a, a nice actual eraser marker. I'm not going to do it uh, right now because that'll just take time and. Um, it's whatever. It's, it, I'm sure you could do it if you know how to use Unity Prefabs. But it's the exact same thing as what we're doing. Um, come on. Come on. All you're doing is you're just adding this marker script, uh, marker interactable script. And then it'll work. You'll be able to hit the uh, whiteboard and using a tip as the ray cast, you can put the thickness really high to act like an eraser. So even on the one I have right here, I can put the uh, thickness to like 10. Um, and let me just uh, reset this to oh, just the rotation. Reset rotation. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to hit Control D to just duplicate that. And um, I think 2 was my, my number. Yeah. So Again, you can just sit here and set these up if you wanted. I'll just do a couple just to show you how easy it is to have a bunch of different markers. So I can have one that's red, one that's yellow. I don't need to do that. Uh, let's do a blue marker. There we go. Now, there's one more thing I want to explain before we're completely done here. Um, the interaction with the marker is not going to be proper. So here's my markers. Look at that. They have all different colors. So I have one that's red. There we go. One that's blue, which isn't going to show up as good there. But And then the erasing one, if I just try not to hit my... Uh... <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this is the erasing one. I bumped up the... Uh, thickness of it quite a bit. So if I touch this, you can see it's it's a lot thicker. It's a lot easier to erase this. Doesn't make sense, obviously, but <laughs> so here's the issue. I set up my right hand to look nice with this marker. However, if I was to grab it with my left hand, mm -mm, that doesn't look right at all. Something's wrong. <laughs> So the reason for this is because the attached transforms do not understand the difference between a left and a right hand, right? Our hands are not the same, right? This one faces this way. Um, if you're When we're talking about moving hands in, in VR, uh, this is how I like to look at hands. So if my left hand, for example, like this, the thumb points up, the fingers point forward, and where I grip is the right way. Right? So I have up, forward, right. That is our axis. Now, the issue is that our right hand has the exact same rotation. So if I'm holding my hands like this in uh, the game, instead of up is still up and forward is still forward, those axes are actually perfect. However, the x-axis, left to right, well, on this hand, right's that way. But on this hand, right is also that way. But in real life, our hand, our right hand would be that way, right? Our hands are flipped. But XRI, unfortunately, does not understand this. <laughs> it doesn't know that our hands are flipped. So the attach transform, this um, marker attach that we created, that is the offset of where the how the marker is oriented in our hands, it is not oriented for the left hand. It's only oriented for the right one. So to solve this, I made a script that basically flips this attach transform to the other side of the marker. So what if I grab so if I grab it with my left hand, it'll flip the attach transform, which means it'll be oriented properly for my left hand. To set this up, all you have to do is go to your left hand, wherever I put it, left hand. And on the interactor, we're going to add that script, the Flip attach on grab script. That's it. We just, we just add that script and it handles everything for us. So now it should just um, 
flip the attach for us every time we grab it. I see. And one and two. Oh, oh that one's not working. What did I do? <laughs> Doesn't look like it's working at all. <laughs> Okay, let me just double check that. What am I missing here? I am missing, says, there's an error here saying object reference not set to an instance of an object. So whenever you see object reference not set, that means something is null, something hasn't doesn't exist. It tells us what line this error is on as well. So on line 13 of the awake method. So if... Uh, my computer ever decides to load C sharp, we can go through debugging this. Is it open? Yes. So again, line 13, that's this line right here. And we can see that this line is accessing a interactor, which is uh, an XR base interactor. Now it can't find this interactor. So my only guess is I put it on the wrong game object. <laughs> so yes, there is no interactor on this game object. That's the problem. Um, this is actually supposed to go on the left-hand interactor, not the left-hand uh, tracked object. So I'm going to put it on the left-hand interactor instead. There we go. Now let's test this. OK. Whoop. And grab and grab. Look at that. Now it fits properly in both hands, and I can. Uh, oh, that's the eraser one. <laughs> I can draw at the same time. Okay. And that is pretty much it for today's class <laughs> in the interactive classroom. Uh, how am I doing on time? We are doing well. Awesome. <laughs> I uh, we are just about uh, twenty after two here, uh, so okay. it's uh, yeah, so it's good timing. I can uh, okay. uh, hop back in here if you like, but um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. If anybody's interested in the scripts and uh, how I made them or what they're doing. Uh, highly recommend just jump in on office hours or if, if you have office hours uh, with Circus Stream, jump in on that and uh, I'll be happy to uh, go over some of it with you. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'm going to hand it over to Tyler now. Awesome. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, that was perfect. Um, so I'm going to let this close um, and I will bring a slideshow back up onto the screen here. How the heck do I leave? <laughs> <laughs> I can kick you out if you want. There we go. Uh, so thank you, Dustin. Um, obviously, that, uh, that was a great presentation uh, going through. Um, so I am just going to share my screen again with everybody and uh, go through a couple uh, final things with you. Uh, before I do, I'm actually going to uh, publish um, a poll in here right now. So feel free to fill that out at any time uh, while you're in the remainder of the workshop. And then uh, we're going to go through some questions here in uh, just a quick second. Uh, but before I do that, let me share my screen. There we go. Perfect. And we don't need me. There we go. Perfect. So um, that was uh, the presentation for today. Um, I'm just going to go through here. And I'm hoping everyone can see my screen here. Um, oh. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Sorry for the delay there, guys. Um, so uh, I'm just going to go through some quick examples of uh, some of our students' work here um, and then just go through some quick uh, course information. And then we can go to, uh, jump into the Q&A if anybody has any questions there. So uh, on the screen here, you can just see these are some examples of uh, some scenes that were uh, created through Unity. Uh, we have some examples of some work done uh, through uh, using Vuforia for augmented uh, reality. And then we have uh, some C-sharp uh, C scripting and uh, coding. 
Uh, you can see some examples here up on the screen. Just always nice to share a few examples. Um, our students, you know, uh, obviously I mentioned earlier, we've uh, taught over 45,000 students. So uh, it'd be really hard to get them all up on the screen right now to show you. But uh, this is just a handful of uh, some of our students to give you an idea of kind of what they're doing, uh, where they're working now. And uh, we, you know, uh, this uh, whole uh, presentation is recorded, so you'll get a slide copy of this. Um, but yeah, you're, you're welcome to uh, to look in, uh, connect, uh, reach out to any of these uh, individuals on LinkedIn, um, or as you're uh, kind of moving into the uh, XR industry, uh, as well as any of our other students there. Um, in terms of our courses, uh, we have a few. I'm just going to do a really quick uh, description of each. Uh, we have the self-paced uh, video course. Uh, this is, uh, you purchase this, th this through the website. Uh, you kind of work through this at your own pace. And uh, the idea is to give you a little bit of a taste of your first uh, build for an AR project and to give you one to put into your portfolio right away. Um, if you go through this and uh, it seems like it's uh, something that you're interested in, then uh, obviously the development and design courses could be a natural next uh, fit, uh, more, more likely to uh, the development side for that specific uh, pathway. But um, a lot of students uh, bypass this and jump right into the 10 week courses too. Uh, obviously it's uh, uh, both options are available there for you. Uh, the 10 week XR development course, so you can see it up on the screen here. It's uh, beginner friendly. Um, basically, you're going to be going back and forth and building uh, augmented and virtual reality apps uh, using Unity and C Sharp coding and scripting throughout the course. Uh, you kind of bounce back and forth and it's all uh, portfolio based as well so that you do end up with, uh, I think about seven projects that you put into your portfolio once the course is finished. Um, there's industry uh, recognized certifications in partnership with Unity. Um, and then as well, we do have a uh, one-on-one -on -one support options for our course uh, packages. Um, there's an advanced level package where you can uh, include that and if you'd prefer. And uh, very similarly, uh, the interaction design course is uh, structured almost the same. Uh, the biggest difference, uh, I guess, between the two is that the design course is focused on design and uh, is not focused on the uh, development. So you're not going to be doing any coding or scripting. Uh, but in terms of structure, it's also 10 weeks. Uh, you're going to get the same three office hours or sorry, uh, hours, three hours of instruction, five office hours per week. Uh, everything's flexible. There's three different time slots for both of those two. Um, and uh, oh, I should have mentioned uh, the development course starts on July 26th, uh, the next upcoming one. And the interaction design you can see is July 13th. Uh, we also have our Unity Developer Bootcamp. Uh, the next course for this one will be October 11th. Uh, this one's a little bit more in depth. It's uh, it, it dives a lot more into detail into uh, Unity development overall, um, and it includes uh, AR and VR, but it uh, jumps outside of that into uh, Unity development as a whole kind of thing. Um, this one runs uh, currently. We're running uh, two of these a year. I think we're looking to do an increase there, but uh, October 11th would be the next cohort. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of a, a breakdown there. We obviously have uh, full syllabus options for all three of our courses that we can share. Um, in terms of certification, I uh, mentioned earlier that we're partnered with Unity. So uh, all three of the certifications that you can see in the middle of the screen there would be um, offered through CircuitStream uh, in partnership with Unity. Um, the difference is, is once you take the uh, developer bootcamp, you also have the option to go one step further uh, through the Unity's website and uh, do their cer um, associate certificate level. Um, the cost is included um, through our uh, bootcamp course. So basically, once you've completed it, you would just, uh, I think you have a year or so to complete the uh, Unity certification as well. Um, some people ask me, you know, what's uh, uh, the benefit of both? Uh, we are partnered with Unity uh, in that sense. So if anybody uh, from a company perspective is looking to hire somebody uh, with Unity level certification, we would be uh, qualified in that sense. Um, however, uh, there are networking um, uh, components that come on both sides. Uh, so if you can kind of work your way into the XR industry and tap yourself into uh, both CircuitStream's network and Unity's network, it's certainly not going to hurt uh, anything as you move forward there. So uh, that's the certification. Uh, community and support uh, beyond the uh, the lessons themselves. We've also created a pretty robust community of XR learners. Uh, we have students, alumni, um, all of them get lifetime, uh, lifetime access to all of the material, um, as well as being part of our Slack community. So uh, while you're in the course, uh, once you've completed the course, um, as long as you like, you are welcome to interact with all of our students, our staff. Um, in fact, uh, a ton of our students end up collaborating uh, together and sharing ideas uh, once they've taken the courses with us, uh, especially if they're, uh, you know, one is uh, doing development and the other is doing design. It's, uh, it's a really good way to infer uh, information share there. 
Um, and uh, you know, for the at least for the uh, the ten week courses, the boot camp, you do have to have a little bit of experience. But uh, for anybody looking to get into this, uh, there's really no fear. You know, you don't have to worry about being a beginner. Uh, you don't have to have any Unity experience uh, or any coding experience. Uh, usually, what I say to people, as long as you're kind of aware of what you're going to be learning, uh, you don't have to have experience to jump into it. Uh, we've curated these courses so that they are uh, completely beginner friendly in that sense. Um, and then in terms of pricing, always really nice to know what the uh, the course options are. Uh, we have both a, a starter and a plus package for the development and design 10 week courses. Uh, the pricing you can see is in uh, US dollars, uh, 3,950 and then 4,950. Uh, the big difference with the uh, plus package is that the plus package comes with an additional four weeks of C-sharp coding and scripting, uh, as well as 10 private uh, hour sessions with the instructor. Um, so the private sessions can be used, you know, uh, some people just, uh, some learners uh, benefit a little bit more from one-on-one one time. Uh, so they utilize those sessions to kind of uh, cover information from the classes. Uh, others, um, you know, would utilize the classes and then uh, prefer the, the private time to be able to go off script a little bit. Uh, you know, for example, maybe you wanted some uh, information uh, through Unreal, uh, and it's not necessarily necessarily part of our current curriculum. Uh, some of our instructors may have some information in that sense that you could kind of learn in the private session. So just an example there. Um, and then in terms of payments uh, for our courses, uh, you can pay for any of the courses up front. Uh, for any of the uh, students that are coming to us from the uh, U.S., we have a, a, a finance partner in the U.S. called Climb Financing, and you can set up, I think, up to about a five-year, I think there's... Um, 12 month, uh, 20 month and five year options. Uh, don't quote me on that. We'd have to just double check. But uh, either way, the, the the bottom line is there's finance options for US uh, students. And then anybody outside of that uh, internationally outside of the US, uh, we would have uh, finance plans available directly through CircuitStream. Uh, you can just ask the, um, the admissions uh, advisors for that. And then speaking of the admissions team, it's also almost like I set this up this way. Um, these are the four individuals who are currently running our admissions for both um, the uh, university and the um, uh, main course. Um, we should have, I'm not quite sure, um, we are partnered in terms of um, the courses with several universities. Um, so we can share that information with you as well, uh, both in the US and Canada. Uh, my apologies, I usually do have a little bit of a slide included here today, uh, or included in this that I didn't share with you today, but uh, I didn't include it today. So if you have any questions about uh, any of the university uh, options through us as well, please do reach out. Um, and then you'd likely be connecting with uh, Leanne or Stella, uh, Shoshana, and then Roham is uh, more on the direct side. So, um, uh, oh yeah, some links here as well. So if you were uh, looking to access, uh, this is some of the school links that we have. Uh, the circuit stream link is directly at the bottom there. This is going to take you into the uh, the course uh, website information. Uh, and again, this this whole presentation is um, going to be sent, uh, recorded and sent to everybody. So these links will be in there, but feel free to screenshot if you'd like to. I'll give you a quick second. <laughs> All right. And then that's it. That's it for the actual formal part of the presentation here, guys. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the uh, presentation. And then uh, we can invite uh, Dustin back up onto the screen if you're still hanging out there, Dustin. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to open up the, uh, the questions here. And Dustin, did you see any questions? Uh, that you wanted to jump into right away, or did you want me to just pick one over here? Yeah, yeah. So um, there's been actually a couple of questions about multiplayer. Um, I even mentioned this when when we were deciding to do the workshop. Like, yeah, doing a whiteboard's cool and all, but man, would, I, would it be really cool to show multiplayer? But uh, the truth is, we don't have time to show multiplayer. I mean, of course, I could have some pre-built scripts for people. I already I have some pre-built scripts already, and I can show you how to hook them up. But even that requires too much time. So I'm not promising anything. If we're going to do a workshop on it in the future, it'd be really cool though. Hey, Tyler, just saying. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, if you are interested in doing networking, uh, we do have instructors here, myself included, that are experienced with networking. We can absolutely uh, help you bang out a project that you can do VR classroom with your friends across the world. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, oh, wow, we've got quite a few questions in here. Let me just put one up real quick. Um, so is XR design course a little bit easier than this? Um, depends on what you would classify, I guess, as easier. Um, if you're somebody who uh, finds coding and scripting to be a little bit challenging, or if it's not something that's of interest to you, uh, I would usually suggest the design side would be easier for you. <laughs> um, although there's obviously still some work on both sides. Is that accurate, Dustin? Uh, yeah, so the XR dev course is a lot more, 
developer based working in unity and um, setting interactions up doing programming. Uh, and the design course is a lot more focused around the design of a game and building out the UI elements and all that stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So people who aren't into the uh, the coding side would be better suited or might like the design side for sure. Um, so let's see here. There's specifics, uh, CIDR uh, repository you'd recommend finding free assets. Here, I can do that one. I'll let you answer that one, Dustin. Um, oh, geez. Yeah. Uh, there's tons of materials out there. So uh, for example, the table that I found, I, I just opened Google, typed in uh, old wood table model. And I got like th three different search results that took me to different websites. So um, see if I can remember them all by heart here. Uh, but we have the Unity store, the asset store. Um, lots of free assets that you can use there as well. Um, and then we have Turbo Squish, good for free assets. Uh, I don't have my list open right now. I have a list of like a bunch of resources that I usually give to my students, but uh, <laughs> I'll come back to this question. I'll go find my list, but I'll come back yeah. to it. I would have just said the Unity Asset Store. So the fact that you have a couple more to share is even better. So that's perfect. Um, so let we'll we'll come back to that one there. And then uh, is there any way to support multiple controllers? Are these packages you are installing to specific to your controller uh, as the creator? So this would be for the presentation, I guess. Yeah, so I assume they want to have two headsets running on one game. Because I feel like in a, in a VR classroom, you're, you're probably thinking more about networking, right? So I'm wondering if the question is more, how does the networking side of this work? How do you interact with other people inside this single instance of a game? Because um, in Unity, typically you just have the one XR rig. And I don't think you can have more than one. I actually have never experimented with that, so I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I probably, I, I assume you mean having networking involved. Uh, and how that works is you typically have uh, all the people that are inside your game run their own instance of your application. They have their own instance of the application. And all there is these applications, all these people that are connected, are, they just sync everything back and forth between all the different people. And that is how you would have a VR classroom. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I can see we've got a couple of questions here in, in terms of headsets. So rather than kind of go through each of them, um, do you want to just do a, like a really, really quick overview of uh, like the top maybe three headsets that you could kind of, um, like I would usually recommend people do an Oculus. I call it, call it the Starbucks of headsets. It's easy, it's not uh, overly expensive, uh, but is there any anything there that uh, you'd want to share about maybe the top three ones that people could look at? Um, all I know about in terms of headsets is the Oculus Quest uh, 1 and 2, I guess 2 now, and then the Index and the Vive. Those are the, like the, the three mains that I know about. Um, Index, I believe, is being outclassed by a brand I can't remember the name of, but it's as like up until now, it's been the best in terms of um, field of view and uh, resolution. Then the Quest, obviously, is the cheapest option with uh, it being non-tethered, which uh, is great if you're looking for a really cheap, easy easy to use headset. Um, the only downside of the Quest is, of course, you have a limit on the performance of your game or whatever you're running in the headset. Uh, some games, you can't, you can't actually run on Oculus Quest 2 standalone. However, you can use things like AirLink or the link cable to connect directly with your computer to run pretty much any game. That way it uses your computer's GPU and CPU. Awesome. Were there, were there limitations with Quest and uh, Facebook specifically? I had somebody ask me that recently as well. Uh, no, there's not limitations. It's just you have to have an account and be logged in to okay. use the Oculus Quest 2. Perfect. OK. And then I've this one looks like a longer, I feel like this one's going to be good for you to, to <laughs> respond to. <laughs> Uh, hardware requirements for doing this Unity or similar VR development projects? Are there any cloud-based development server offering uh, coming to the market? Hardware requirements for doing this Unity or similar VR development projects? Are there any cloud-based development server offering committed? Cloud-based development server offering coming. Okay, this is like three questions. <laughs> 
so we actually do have um, a blog post on the hardware requirements. Um, would, would, would somebody be able to find that for me? Um, so it goes over all the hardware requirements for different sorts of headsets and what would be required for our classes and all that stuff. Um, Oh, I can see the second part of this. Yeah. So they're basically just saying, so we don't have to buy a fancy computer uh, to be able to take the course. And I got in part of that too, you actually don't need a, an overly fancy computer to be able to run unity, right? No, uh, you don't. It, it's, it, it's nice. It, it's nice to have a fancy computer, have things be faster, but it's not required <laughs> yeah. as long so as you can run. Um, so I do recommend if you're if you're really interested in being a developer, really interested in working with Unity and doing VR, um, you know you don't you don't have to have a good computer, but I recommend you have a good enough computer where you can use your headset directly from your computer. It may, like just how I was doing it today, I was able to put my headset on, I was able to interact with Unity, flip it back, test it, go back to Unity. Being able to do that's really nice. If you're using Oculus standalone, you have to make a build and send it to your Oculus, and it's slow. It's it's a slog. Uh, it's not fun to develop like that. <laughs> All right. So I think that one did that one. And then um, just kind of looking over the questions here, instead of shifting the origin of the interactor on your head to allow the pen to touch the whiteboard, is it possible to use a collision at the... Oh, this is definitely a question for you. <laughs> so uh, there's a couple things going on in this question. I actually, I was reading about it over um, before. And OK, so shifting the origin of the interactor on your hand to allow the pen to touch the whiteboard. I assume you're talking about the collider on your hand, not the actual attached transform of the hand, because I never actually changed the attached transform of the hand at all. I only changed the attached transform of the pens specifically. That way, the attached transform of the hand is going to remain wherever it is consistent for everything. Um, now, that aside, if you are talking about the collider of the hand, how I had to move it forward to match up with the pen, um, yeah, there's a bit of an issue here. I, I actually am going to admit it's not easy to do because XRI's grab interactables don't support um, physics tracking velocity and not tracking rotation. So remember when I had the pen in my hand and I pushed it against the whiteboard and it would like bend because it's it's colliding with the whiteboard? Well, if we had the pen tracking the position of my hand, but not the rotation, that means it couldn't bend. That means I could write and it would hit the, the whiteboard and it would stay there, but it wouldn't bend. But XRI's grab and tractables do not allow that. So. Uh, to solve this, to make an actual really efficient way of doing this, what I would do is I would actually copy the XR grab interactable script and I would add in the, or I would actually just remove the, uh, the rotation tracking, rotation velocity tracking and only have it instant. And that would, that would be really smooth. That would feel really nice without having to change the interactor or the collider of the head. Um, so what you did or what you're saying, you're asking there, uh, is it possible? Absolutely, it's possible to do that. But I think you're still going to run into the issue where the collider of the hand has to be um, at the right position of the tip of the pen. You're still going to have that issue. OK, I'm done. <laughs> um, he says, thank you. I'm just looking at the chat on the side. He says, thank you, Dustin. Um, and I think that was it for the main questions. I think we kind of covered most of them in there. Uh, oh, is there a new one there? What are some of the best places to publish your VR apps other than the Oculus Store? Did you see that one, Dustin? Uh, where are some of the best places to publish your VR apps? Oh, um, I mean, there's a lot of common places like, uh, I mean, you have the Xbox store, Microsoft store, you have the Steam store, you have the uh, Epic store. <laughs> I think even, I don't know, Google probably has a store by now. It's a lot of different stores out there. Um, if I was just going to publish a game, I'd probably take a look at the different offers available. Uh, from my understanding, Epic might have better, the best offers. 
and uh, then probably Steam is the most popular store. It's probably where you get the most um, traffic for your game. And then we just got a question here about, um, you know, what the, the benefit of creating a, a VR classroom, like uh, uh, the focus of today's. I mean, maybe you could explain how that could be used uh, for different types of applications or. Um, drawing on a whiteboard's nice. Like, I think it's cool, it, it, whatever. And it could come in handy during a class. But honestly, I don't think that's the selling point of a VR classroom. I think the selling point of a VR class, other than being able to, you know, teach from home and have students at home, is you can do a lot more in VR. You can be, you can, instead of going on a field trip somewhere, you can just go VR somewhere, you know, you can go to some crazy mountain and you can have a area, like, there's a lot of, what's the word, um, in, instructional, not instructional, there's, there's a lot of places you can go that are that teach that are learning you can learn things you can learn about plants you can learn about trees you can learn about animals and you can do it in vr with your class like that's it and having a whiteboard's nice obviously it's being able to draw and it's nice but i think just teaching in general in vr is is the future honestly it's it's incredible the amount of stuff and even with that said in circuit stream i've only been here for a year but we have tons of students working on projects that are teaching especially in stuff like construction work things that are dangerous things that require you to do precision um medical lots of medical teaching as well a lot of great applications for um teaching in general in vr um not just with a whiteboard but all that so the VR classroom allows you to kind of do things that a physical classroom wouldn't. I mean, and you know, there's there's mm. pro, there's there's um, benefits Cheaper, to both for kinda. sure. But absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I, so yeah, so I Mike's here. A, hoping that helps uh, answer. Sorry, go ahead, Dustin. Uh, got a sorry, you can me here. Um, actually, with the AirLink, I play in Unity and put on the headset for everything. Come, yeah. So uh, AirLink or the uh, the Link cord, uh, as long as you as long as you can get those working. Uh, absolutely it's great for uh vr but again with airlink it's also using your computer's gpu and cpu to broadcast back and forth your headset it's not using the little chip in the little android chip in your headset so Air airlink's definitely a great choice as well perfect and i think i see dayon is in the chat there he's answering everyone really quickly i think in terms of the questions uh we've gone through all of those on on the right i think they've all been answered um, so I'll just give uh, one last minute here. If there's anybody uh, that still has a question, uh, feel free to pop it into the uh, questions tab. Um, I think, are we a little over? Or I don't know if we're supposed to be done at uh, 2.30 or 3 today. But either way, I feel like we're doing good for time here. Um, awesome presentation. Uh, I don't see anything else popping up in the side here. So uh, just one last time, I wanted to note for everybody uh, remaining here that uh, this will be fully recorded. Uh, everybody will get a copy of this via email. Uh, so if you'd like to go back, uh, the other side too is uh, our YouTube page uh, houses all of our previous uh, open houses and workshops. Um, so outside of this one specifically, you can actually uh, visit the, the page and go back and uh, kind of go through some of our previous presentations too. Um, but with that, I think we can leave it there. Um, just looking off to the side, we've got some thank yous coming in. Absolutely, thank you as well for joining us today. Uh, Dustin, did you have uh, anything else to uh, leave us with before we go for the day? No, no, thank you very much, everybody. It's great teaching and doing this workshop. I'm excited to do another one. Awesome. Yeah, we'll probably be back here in uh, a couple of weeks together. But um, so on that, uh, enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. Have an awesome weekend and uh, look for our workshop coming up next week. Okay. Cheers. <laughs>